I told you that in the Jesus movement, I was not smart. I had this great move of God, this great youth revival, this unbelievable event that the University of California had never seen before or since. But I didn't know what it meant. And part of what killed our phenomenal Jesus movement was our eschatology, our belief that the rapture would happen any day. So we laid no plans. We made no, no strategies. We didn't listen to God. We, we fulfilled that part of Psalms, that dichotomy. There was the Jews and there was Moses. And, he, and the Bible says under Moses, God revealed his acts. But under, under the people, God removed his act, revealed his acts. But under Moses, he revealed his ways. So we had acts, but we didn't have ways. We didn't have a long-term strategy. Now I'm not stupid anymore about that. I know that last night was not for me some blessing. It kept me up all night because I said to God, three in, in the middle of the night, I said to God, you don't just do these things. You did not just scare me and them for no reason. So one day, and with this, I'm going to have to move quickly. A young man by the name of Jeff Foster was a carpenter in Seattle. He just bought a pickup truck. How many of you know you don't come between a man and his pickup truck? <laughs> but every day he would drive the same street in Seattle come to the end of a road where you had to turn left and at that turn there was a woman laying in a bed on a porch watching the rare sunsets of Seattle and the Lord said I want you to sell your pickup truck buy a van let me tell you to go from a pickup truck to a van I thank God that God didn't tell Jeff a minivan because that would have been the ultimate curse. <laughs> but he said, I want you to buy a van and put a lift on the back, go up in that porch and take that woman in that bed to church. And he said, no, he fought it. But one day he became willing. Now, I'm going to stop. Before I tell the rest of this story, I'm going to look you in the eye. God is going to require that same kind of revolutionary originality and sacrifice from this church. Because you're living in a state that influences America. California, if it were a standalone economy, would be the fifth largest economic system in the world. Even with all of the inflation and all the corruption... California has a force for evil or good that is virtually unlimited. Take the state of New York, which wouldn't even be in the top 15 economic systems in the world. Their annual wealth is pegged at $1.7 trillion. California, $3 trillion. By itself, California doesn't need America. They, these leftist communists that tell you that, they're not lying. It's true. They could function without the rest of America, and they believe that. And some of them are sincerely looking at that. Well, California's power for good and evil is unlimited. Therefore, the Christians that live here have an opportunity to be something that few Christians had ever lived. Because God told me California is going to be saved. <laughs> So Jeff sold his truck, bought a van, I choke on the word, <laughs> with a lift and went up on that porch. And who was on that porch? Her name was Barbara. Barbara was a real estate agent. One day writing up an offer, sitting in her Volkswagen bug, writing up an offer on a house she was selling when a drunk man hit her car 
and they estimate he was doing about 50 miles an hour when he crushed into her car and destroyed her. She ended up paralyzed from the neck down. After 11 surgeries, the top neurosurgeon of the Northwest gave up. And she had to be in a chair that was a bed and a wheelchair, both. And she was that way for 12 years. And one day, Jeff goes up there and he sees a nurse and he says, what is her name? Said Barbara. Said, I want to ask her to go to church. She said, she's not going to go to church with you. She's a Buddhist. And he's thinking about the van he just bought. <laughs> well, he said, well, I don't care. I'm going to invite her. Excuse me. And he said, Barbara, my name is Jeff. I want you to go to church. Every day he stopped, asked her again, asked her again. Finally, she agreed to go on a Wednesday night. Then she agreed to go a second time. Then it became his ritual on Sunday and Wednesday to stop his van there, pick her up, take her to church. One day he met her on a Friday, said there's an evangelist named Mario Morello. He's coming to our, our area. We're going to do a crusade and he's going to pray for the sick and I want you to come. Now she was very embarrassed because that had never been broached before. But he got her in the truck. He brought her down. And I'm walking out to preach the gospel and pray for the sick. When down in front of me is this bed with this woman on it. Under the blanket, she's fully clothed. She's laying there. And we evangelists love to have the hard cases in the back. We like the neck pain and the nostrils because they tend to believe you work your way up. But there she was, imposing, interrupting, stopping everything. And I will never forget that night as long as I live. It haunts me. Well, there I was, and all of a sudden, she started laughing. Okay, help me with this. You're paralyzed from the neck down. You haven't moved in 12 years. And you're laughing. And she was laughing. And I rebuked the spirit of new age over Seattle. I talked about it. I taught it that night. Talked about the demonic power that God could break it over Seattle. And here's Barbara and what she said to me later. I was laying there and I heard a man with a baritone voice laughing. It was the most glorious laugh I've ever heard. She said it was infectious and I couldn't resist it. So I started laughing. She said 10 minutes later, that voice from across the room said, Barbara, come over here. And she took her arm, which now worked folded back the blanket, sat up, turned, stood up in front of her own wheelchair and walked across the auditorium. Somebody help God, me give God the glory. Somebody help me give God the glory. Only an idiot would keep preaching. Is this mic working? Only an idiot would keep preaching. It is currently 831 and if you parents, you probably need to get your kids. The workers have been amazing tonight, but I just wanted to announce that and make it clear. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna look at you. Barbara was healed by the power of God. Now, we took her to a telephone. We took her to a phone. We, we got a phone and called her doctor, who's also a Buddhist. Woke him up. Said, sir, someone wants to talk to you. Hi, this is Barbara. I can walk. 
He says, no, you can't. I, this went on for a few minutes. Yes, I can. No, yes, I can. Finally, he gave up. He said, look, be in my office at 9 a.m. and I'll make you a deal. If I see you so much as take one step on your own power, I will renounce Buddha and serve Jesus Christ. How many of you are willing? How many of you are willing? How many of you are willing? Yeah, you guessed it. Barbara and Jeff got married. How's that for a story? You hear all the women going, oh. None of the men did it because they didn't want anyone wondering about them. But we brought that couple on the 700 Club. First time in my life that I saw Pat Robertson incapable of saying anything. It was that real.